Melina, what do you think it means to budget? Um, spend all your money. No. And do you like credit cards? No. -uh. Why do you not like credit cards? Because it means you sometimes you leave all your money. Hey guys, I'm Wendy Valencia, and if you are new to my channel, make sure you click that big old red subscribe button down below, and then click that bell notification icon so you will be alerted every time I upload. Because on this channel, two days a week, we talk Dave Ramsey and personal finances, specifically the drama associated with our personal finances, and then one day a week, it's generally family, momming, something about us. Um, and what's important to us at that particular moment in time. And sometimes I cook whatever I feel like talking about mostly on Fridays. So today I wanted to talk a little bit more about our debts. A couple weeks back I was talking with Dawn over at Money Mom and if you don't know her channel I will link to it down below and I'll go ahead and link her in the last 20 seconds also of this video and I would highly suggest that you go over there. She's got some seriously interesting stuff. She talks about living on a very low income frugally and paying off her house. I mean, so much interesting stuff and she loves Lucille Ball and that makes her awesome because I love Lucille Ball. I have ever since I was a little kid, I have seen every single episode of I Love Lucy. But anyway, she had asked me to maybe talk about my different debts and, you know, update you guys monthly as to what we were paying off. And I thought that was a great idea. And I can't believe I had never even considered doing that because I guess I didn't really think that you guys would think that was too interesting. But then, I wouldn't have thought you would have enjoyed knowing where we spend every single cent of our money every month. And you do. So, hey, today I wanted to talk about the vast majority of our debt. And I talked about this in the very beginning in a, I think it was my second video. It's super embarrassing. I'm ashamed. But, you know, hey, I'll link it up here in the eye in the sky so you can check it out and see what a dork I was. I was worried about talking loud because people might hear me and I was nervous and I talked slowly and yeah, it's hilariously bad. Bad, 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 bad. It, it's all about why we have so much debt. And we do have two bank loans that encompass a huge percentage, I haven't done the math, but a huge percentage of our debt. The largest loan that we had when we started, started out at $140,000. And it was, if you can believe it, unsecured. What bank loans somebody $140,000 with no security? We didn't put up a car, we didn't put up anything. And right around that same time, we got another loan for $100,000 or $90,000. It was all within a year of each other, and that one was also unsecured. Yeah, it was a little crazy. I'm kind of shocked at my bank, but me personally, I have a really long history with both of those banks. I've been banking with both of those banks since I was a little kid and have always paid my payments on time, if not early. And most of the time I did pay off stuff early. So I had history of being a, a good person to lend to. So we got those two loans and we started paying on them. The thing is we got them while we were living overseas. In, we were living in Mexico. I was stationed down there for work. Mauricio was also working down there, had a great job down there. And we, because of my job, we didn't have to pay for housing or pretty much anything, you know, just our monthly expenses. So we had a lot of disposable income and we were irresponsible. I, I mean, I'll just lay it right out there. We could have paid cash for all of this debt if we had been more responsible with our money and more financially intelligent. There's no change in the past. We accept it, we've learned from it, and we're moving forward. And it's not mistakes we're gonna make again. So our largest loan started out at $140,000. And what was that? The vast majority of that loan was for my sister-in-law and her husband 
to come to the United States. They are both Colombian citizens and we sponsored them to come to the United States and attend George Mason University to learn to speak English. And George Mason is an extremely expensive school and their English program was $26,000 a year tuition for each one of them. The other 48,000 was room and board and medical insurance and all of those books, all of those things that are associated. We paid for their food, we paid for their rent, we paid for everything. So that was one year, $100,000. And I'll tell you, there were cheaper ways we could have done it, absolutely, but the, the program at Mason was very similar to the one that Mauricio did at LSU and it was, you know, one of the best in the area and I knew a full immersion program was really what they needed and it worked really well. They're both English speakers now. They're both doing very, very well. They are both, you know, still studying. They're studying at a local community college here and they are both working their butts off to pay their bills. They are doing so well financially. They are paying cash for everything. They are going to be amazing in the future and they'll be able to help so many people because they helped themselves first. And in truth, that is part of the reason that we are in the financial situation that we are because we didn't help ourselves first. And so that is one thing we've tried really hard to teach them. So also about the time of our biggest loan, I needed to have medical surgery, medical surgery, as opposed to non-medical surgery. I don't know. So I needed to have surgery down in Mexico and I stupidly did it in Mexico instead of insisting that I do it in the US because I thought the medical programs that we were involved with because we were considered upper income in Mexico, the hospitals that we were going to were fantastic, really nice hospitals, really, really brand new, the medical, my doctor, my surgeon was actually trained in uh, the Mayo Clinic in, in surgery. I mean, he was fantastic, fantastic. And so that was 16,000 ish of that 140,000. We expected to get reimbursed by my medical insurance. And as you all know, we did not. So we are out that $16,000. We did appeal it up to the highest possible levels. We were basically told that if we, we had reached as far as we could go, and any farther would require a lawsuit. And when I did talk to an attorney about it, the attorney said, yes, we absolutely have a case. We absolutely could sue, but the likelihood that we would actually come out ahead was minimal because the attorney fees would be so extensive to fight such a large insurance company that we would ultimately spend more in attorney fees than we would get back. And then the last $20,000, I legitimately, I think we probably had some small little debts that we rolled together. I, I truly, truly, truly do not remember. It was, you know, a couple of years ago and we were so bad with money then that I just, I didn't pay attention that closely. I just did what I had to do to survive and to pay the bills. And again, we were never late on any bills and we always had enough money to do whatever we wanted. and. You know, in reality, all of our debts are big expenses. It wasn't like we were charging, you know, meals out and groceries. We always paid cash for that stuff because we had been introduced to Dave Ramsey many years before. So we did work with cash for a vast majority of our marriage, but it was the big, the really big expenses that we hadn't planned for that became a problem. And so then our other big loan, which we call the USAA loan, the first big loan, the 140,000 was the Navy federal loan. The USAA loan, that was a facial reconstructive surgery for my sister-in-law. She had, she really should have had probably dental work when she was a teenager and did not. And as a result, her face kind of became deformed. You couldn't really tell. Um, she felt like you could tell, but you couldn't tell. Um, the only thing that you could really tell is her teeth did not, you know, how your teeth overlap in the front or if you have an underbite, they go the other way. 
Hers did not. They touched here and here. And it was like up here they touched, but not back here. And then back here they touched, but not here. And then her teeth, the hole between her teeth was like this. So she couldn't bite anything with the front of her teeth. And so if she wanted to like eat a carrot, she had to bite with this tooth or way back here in those teeth. And so she did have pain associated with it and it was uncomfortable for her and she never smiled because of it. So we decided that we would pay to have facial reconstructive surgery for her. We looked at the various options. We did try and do it a little more cheaply by having her go through one of the medical colleges there, the dental colleges, I'm sorry, because she had to have extensive dental work before she could even have the surgery on her skull. And so she did all of that, but it was taking years and we didn't have enough years that we were gonna be in Mexico. And we wanted to do it in Mexico because the medical system down there was far more reasonably priced than it is in the US. And insurance wouldn't cover any of her surgery because they considered it cosmetic. Yeah, it, it's awful. Insurance, insurance is the bane of my existence, I think. But, so we wanted to do it down in Mexico and the, the college was taking too long. So we ended up going with a private dentist, which really wasn't that much. And then once her dental was done, they were finally able to do her surgery and they broke her, her face and her jaw in like, I don't even remember now, like 28, 30 places and put little pleats in and moved everything around. And it was a very graphic surgery and very scary for her, for us, but everything came out great and she looks fantastic. And truthfully, there was really no change in her appearance, but she felt better about herself and that's all that really matters. And she didn't have any pain anymore, which was the most important for us. And she has a normal bite now and she actually has a beautiful smile now and she smiles a lot more. So that's great. And so that surgery, I want to say cost around $50,000. And then we also around that time, we rebuilt one entire level of my in-laws house that cost about $7,000. I actually did a video the last time we were in Colombia visiting my in-laws and I'll link that one up here and you guys can check that out. The, the floor in their house was basically the super thin wood. Like I would stand on it and you could feel the floor like go up and down. And it was actually kind of funny cause there were these little gaps between the, the floor, uh, the the uh, slats i guess and there was no subfloor so melina would get down on the floor when she was like three and she would try and talk to the people below them so we redid that floor for them and that i think with all the materials the concrete the redoing of the ceiling below the floor new tiles everything there was a lot of construction that went into it i think that ended up costing you know like seven thousand dollars or whatever well we do have some normal debt you know like one of we have a credit card mauricio wanted to buy me a wedding ring and he didn't want me to know about it so he took out um a credit card and bought me a, a surprise wedding ring. Cause when we got married, we did not have real wedding rings. I didn't want to pay for them. I think we had been married like seven years, eight years, something like that. And I love it. Love, love, love it. But so we do have some normal debt, but for the most part, you know, and we have a car, right? We have a car loan. We, uh, when we got here, we realized we needed another car. And so we went out and bought a used car and which we drive all the time and we love. We have the car loan and we have normal debt, but we don't have extensive normal debt. We have a lot of not thinking of ourselves and our finances first. That is the vast majority of our financial issues. I hope you understand that while we were irresponsible financially and we made stupid decisions with our money, it was kindness that allowed for us to do that, that we are truly trying to help other people better themselves and and through that bettering ourselves and being better people so it was with good hearts not maybe with our brains but we're learning and we are being responsible with our money now and so so you know click subscribe do what you have to
I, I want to be bigger. I want to be a bigger channel. I, I want to grow, but I don't want to beg, but I will beg. Please, please subscribe to me. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm, I, I don't grovel. Ask Mauricio. He'll tell you. I don't grovel. And I don't dance either, Kelly. Did you see Kelly's live stream about her wedding? There was a discussion about the ability to dance. She thinks I can dance. I cannot. Trust me. If you are new to my channel, make sure you click on my big laughing face to subscribe and I will put up two videos so you can keep on watching. And I'm gonna change up the outro because there are gonna be two videos there. You can figure out which one you wanna click on. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya.